Hello and welcome. We are now ready to begin today's webinar, Top 10 Recommendations to Increase Equity, Participation, and Ownership. My name is Bethany Dennis. I'm with the Rutgers New Jersey New York Center for Employee Ownership, and I'll be your host and moderator. Today's webinar will discuss equity share plan strategies that can increase equity participation and employee share ownership and the key policies and practices that create an engaging ownership culture. The webinar is scheduled for 30 minutes with Q&A at the end and participants are muted. So please submit any questions that you might have to the GoToWebinar questions box at any time. This, this webinar is being recorded and a link to the presentation will be sent to you via email afterwards. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker. Dr. Bill Castellano is Professor of Strategic HR Management at Rutgers University School of Management and Labor Relations. He is also the Executive Director for the Center for Employee Ownership and Executive Committee Member of Rutgers Institute for the Study of Employee Ownership and Profit Sharing, and he serves as a board member of the Global Equity Organization. His research, teaching, and consulting activities are focused on understanding the impact of employee ownership and equity compensation strategies on individual and organizational outcomes, the strategic management of human capital, employee engagement, and developing leaders for the challenges of the 21st century. Bill, over to you. Oh, thank you, Bethany. Um, welcome to the um, webinar this afternoon. Um, the agenda today looking at how to increase um, employee participation in equity type programs, let's begin perhaps looking at the current economic trends that are impacting equity participation. What is the current state of ownership in the United States? Uh, briefly talk about some of the benefits of equity compensation based on a series of research um, that we have done here, and then get right into um, our research on the recommendations to increase equity participation and ownership which really consists of two fundamental um, strategies, helping employees accumulate wealth while managing risk and then creating an engaging culture of ownership. So let's talk about the current economic trends. Uh, unfortunately, one of the negative trends that are impacting equity participation has been the increasing um, income and wealth divide in this country. We've seen a tremendous concentration of wealth among only the very top percentiles of um, families in the United States. Um, many economists think that um, this was also uh, one of the drivers of this problem was this situation called the decoupling of productivity and income growth. So beginning in around the mid 70s up until present, uh, we, we've seen productivity gains, ironically, going mostly to equity holders. But the negative impact that it has had on income um, has created this inequality that has this negative impact that I made reference to. So we see a tremendous concentration of wealth um, among the top 10 percentile, whereas the bottom 90 percentile has um, been seeing a decrease in overall wealth in the United States. The negative impact that it's been having on income um, is substantial. I mean, the bottom 10% of wage earners have actually seen an adjusted to inflation decrease in wages over the last number of decades. The median workforce has seen only a very, very small increase. Um, only the top 10% of wage earners have seen um, some kind of a significant increase in earnings over these last number of decades. So we've seen a tremendous concentration of wealth. The top 1% of U.S. income wage earners right now have about, this is showing 2013, I've seen something 2016, which is about 23%. As you can see, that's pretty much echoing the level that we were at right before the, the Great Depression. So as a result, we've seen a tremendous concentration of stock ownership only among the most wealthy households. Um, the bottom 50% work force wealthy households right now own a negligible amount of equity. Um, the next 10% own a modest. It's primarily concentrated among the top 10%, and even the top 0.1% has seen a significant increase in equity ownership. So the net result of that is the top 10% own about 84% of um, equity in this country. The bottom 80% um, only own about 6.7%. So again, a very um, unique 
um, concentration of uh, equity holdings um, among the very top um, wealthy households. Um, a survey that was conducted by Consumer Finances in 2016 indicate that about 15% of families with private sector employees had some kind of um, stock in their portfolio. And uh, about 10% of that is primarily through pension plans. As you can see, it's definitely related to income. Only 4.5% of the lowest quarter income had some kind of equity holdings, whereas 27.3% of the highest quarter had some form of equity holdings. And when we talk about equity holdings, we're talking about all forms of employee ownership. Employees that directly purchase stock through perhaps an ESPP or on the open market, grants that are coming from their employers, and also ESOPs. Looking at how much equity um, individuals hold, the average nationally is um, about 111,000, but that's highly skewed. I mean, look at the median. The median is only 6,000. And if you look at these income um, quartiles, you can see the lowest quartile has about a $6,300 average holding, whereas the highest um, quartile has over 230,000. <clears> so you can only imagine what the 90th percentile or the 99th percentile um, results are. As a result of families' net worth, employee share ownership is about 7.2% on average, 3% um, at the median. So I think this is a strategy that um, makes sense economically for the country. It makes sense for um, employees to be able to save for re their retirement, but it also makes good business sense. Um, a significant body of research um, shows that equity compensation has very positive impact on employee strategic and financial outcomes. When we look and measure employee outcomes, we look at things like commitment, lower turnover, going above and beyond with their effort, co-monitoring their employees, making more suggestions. And then these positive employee outcomes lead to greater strategic outcomes for these organizations. Studies have shown increase in productivity, increase in innovation, and not surprisingly, companies that achieve strategic outcomes are able to achieve financial outcomes. Uh, many studies look at return on equity. So this is a real interesting story about why it makes sense for companies to increase participation and ownership of employees. Looking at our research, we found um, 10 specific recommendations that companies should think about. When we look at these 10, the first five primarily focuses on helping employees accumulate wealth and managing financial risk. Um, this clearly has a positive impact on their willingness to in engage in different kinds of programs. So let's talk a little bit specifically about these recommendations. First and foremost, no wage substitution, meaning if a company is offering employees equity um, by reducing what they would ordinarily give in income or bonuses, that would have a very negative impact on all of these positive in, um, outcomes that we just previously talked about. Um, research talks about that it diminishes not only participation, but it violates the idea of reciprocity. So it's very unlikely that employees are gonna respond favorably if there is what we call wage substitution. The good news is our research shows that most organizations that are offering equity programs um, do so on top of market levels of pay. So that's really good news. The second suggestion is to offer both long-term and short-term type programs. And why this is important is because there is a um, crisis of savings in this country. Um, to help employees save for their long-term and to look at equity as more of a long-term type savings, it makes sense to offer a complementary short-term program. Um, program could be a bonus program, it could be a profit sharing or a gain sharing type program, but it further incentivizes employees to look at equity as a long-term, perhaps retirement saving type strategy. Um, studies have shown that vesting periods, you know, obviously play a very big role 
in making employees think of equity as a long-term strategy. Um, we've seen um, different kinds of vesting periods ranging from one to seven. Four seems to be the most common. But clearly having both of these programs encourages employees to look at equity and to accumulate more equity. Third is to have a separate and diversified retirement program. So this talks a little bit more towards helping employees manage risk. Um, you don't want employees to have more than 15% of any kind of um, diversified portfolio invested in one stock. Offering an additional retirement program helps employees develop that diversified portfolio. Um, separate retirement programs clearly um, increases employees' willingness to participate in employee um, share plans. And again, it helps employees manage their finances so that they can accumulate um, wealth over the long term. Four, provide equity as a grant or purchase under favorable conditions. So clearly, employers that provide equity as a grant um, totally reduces employees' risk in the equity that they're receiving. Um, providing it as a discount, um, perhaps through an um, employee stock purchasing plan, um, partially reduces the risk. Um, we found that, um, interestingly, the less engaged employees tend to respond very favorably to grant-type programs, whereas employees that are already engaged tend to be the ones that are participate uh, more often in stock purchase plans. So having perhaps both equity grants and giving people the opportunity to um, purchase stock at a favorable rate could have a very positive impact, not only on participation, but also on employee engagement. When we look at the other six recommendations to help increase participation and ownership, um, these six recommendations create what we call an engaging culture of ownership. And in fact, the research that I made reference to, how equity compensation positively impacts employee strategic and financial outcomes, what the research also shows is that when companies have these practices and create this culture of ownership, that all of these outcomes are even greater. Um, so that can significantly um, reduce, um, or I should say increase, the return on investments that employees uh, are making in these kinds of equity holdings. So let's look at these interesting practices. When we think about practices and how they actually shape um, a culture of a firm, you need to think about equity compensation as part of a aligned systems of other practices. So companies need the right kinds of competencies that they can achieve their business objectives by their recruiting, selection, training and development type programs. They need to provide the right kind of work environment so that employers have an opportunity to be successful. So that's how you design jobs and organizational type structures. And then clearly you want to have the right kinds of attitudes and you want employees to be motivated. And that's where equity compensation plays a significant role as part of an overall um, performance management type program. And companies that have an aligned set of practices have much stronger cultures that lead to much greater employee contributions. And in strategic HR management research, this is the primary driver of organizations' competitive advantage. So it really makes sense to think about equity compensation um, as part of a collective um, system of practices that create a very strong culture um, that can positively impact competitive advantage. So what are some of these practices? The first practice is sharing information. I mean, clearly those employees that are participating in equity programs, like any investor, wanna know, you know how is the firm doing? You know, what's their strategic financial um, activities? What's going on in day-to-day -day business decisions? Um, those equity holders want that information. And also, when companies share this kind of information, it actually sends a signal um, that they trust employees. And this basically enhances 
the um, employee's attachment to the company. It also increases what we commonly call this perception of psychological ownership. Um, that they, they begin to feel like owners um, as part of um, equity holdings. Not surprisingly, if somebody is um, thinking about um, investing in a company and you're sharing um, information, it makes sense to emp empower employees to be more accountable. Um, this gives them greater authority. Um, it gives them a sense of ownership that aligns their interest with the long-term interest of the employer. Employees who feel like owners are clearly more likely to increase their equity stake and their share in the success of their organization. Seven, involve employees in decision-making, right? So employees, share owners want to be involved in decision-making, um, particularly those kinds of decisions that impact organizational outcomes. Um, this could include things like employee involvement teams. We've seen companies that have problem solving work groups, self-directed work teams. Um, another big strategy is open book management, where not only are you sharing information, but you're soliciting employees' input and advice. Um, our research shows, interestingly, that employee share ownership actually was directly linked to greater participation in decision-making and monitoring fellow employees. So this is a very common practice among progressive companies that do provide equity programs. Eight, offer more training and development. I mean, this just makes more strategic sense. If you want employees to think like owners, if you want employees to be empowered to make decisions, it makes good business sense to help these individuals develop the competencies um, that will enable them to meet their individual objectives that can be tied to organizational objectives. In fact, when we think about um, high performance work systems, which according to strategic HR research, um, is one of the biggest drivers of um, organizational success, the two key components of a high performance work system happens to be equity compensation supported by um, a significant training and development type program. So investing in training you know, increases employees' commitment to the organization as well and their willingness to go above and beyond and support organizational goals. Um, research that we've done show that investments in employee owner skills actually can enhance firm survival and employability um, stability of these organizations. Nine, create a participatory management philosophy. Clearly managers play a significant role when trying to create a culture of ownership. And according to the research that we've done, um, participatory management reflects the kinds of management competencies that can support this type of a culture. These managers embrace pretty much all the recommendations we've been talking about. They encourage employees to think and act like owners. They share information. They're willing to empower employees to also make decisions. Um, they provide the opportunity for um, employees to attend training programs and develop skills. More importantly, they recognize employees' contributions and accomplishments. They help employees see what we call that line of sight, how their performance impacts the work group performance and how that in turn helps the company be successful. Our research found that employees excel in trust and management when they're not closely supervised. You know, people who think and feel like owners want to be empowered to make some decisions on their own. Not surprisingly, um, number 10 is focusing on the importance of providing financial wellness type programs. Um, as I mentioned, we have a retirement crisis in this country. You know, nearly. 50% of the workforce has zero long-term retirement holdings. 80% um, has less than 5,000. So it really makes um, important business sense, economic sense, helping employees think about how do you save for the long-term and all the strategies that we've been talking about in this program you know, will help um, individuals accumulate wealth long-term but they need to be educated 
Um, and there are two things that I think employers need to communicate to em their employees about um, financial wellness. Interestingly, um, the biggest risk for employees is not participating in programs. We have seen countless times that those who are able to save for long-term retirement needs, a significant portion of their wealth is in equity type holdings. So encouraging employees to accumulate equity and to think about holding on to that equity for a long period of time to finance their retirement um, is critically important. Secondly, um, it's the risk of not being properly diversified. So if you're allowing employees to purchase stock and you're giving employees grants of stock, um, it's important for them to know that they shouldn't have more than 15% of a diversified portfolio invested in that one stock and helping them look at all of their other wealth, maybe their retirement programs and other investments in a more diversified portfolio um, is critically important. Also, perhaps giving employees access to financial advisors that can continue helping them balance their accounts and save for the long term. So there's a compelling number of studies that show how important it is to think about um, these recommendations. Um, studies have shown that these share plan strategies and HR practices have had a significant um, impact on employees' long-term wealth. Um, it certainly increases engagement and commitment. Productivity of these organizations um, tend to be much higher than those organizations that have less type equity programs. We've seen decreased turnover rates, um, increased company survival rates, and an overall increased financial performance. So it's a win-win-win. These types of strategies help individuals, it helps their companies, and certainly it has a, a very positive impact on the, the local economy. What I like to do is also, um, if you're looking for more information about employee stock ownership type plans, um, equity compensation, we're gonna have our third annual conference on October 29th here in New Jersey at the Heldrich Hotel. Um, we'll be giving you more information about accessing our center at the end of this presentation, or you can contact them um, Bethany Dennis, for more information about this particular um, conference that we're going to be running on October 29th. For those that may be interested in participatory management, we have a certificate program. It's a five-day program that we're going to also be running at the Heldridge, uh, October 7th through October 11th. And again, we'll be giving you more information at the end of the presentation about um, registering for either or both of these types of programs. Okay. Thanks, Bill. We're, we're now at the question and answer portion of the webinar. Um, let's answer the first question um, that Nicole typed. She asks, can Bill define short-term options? What is the length he would include in that category? A short-term option would be um, typically an annual type um, program. When you think about a bonus pro program or when you think about a profit sharing program or a gain sharing program, um, those are um, additional type um, bonuses, so to speak, that employees get on top of their regular wages. Um, and it's typically um, on an annualized basis that's tied to the performance of the company. Some of these types of programs could also be tied to the performance of the individuals. But it's a supplementary program um, on top of wages um, that can still finance short-term um, financial needs of employees so that when they get equity, um, there may be a greater incentive for them to hold on to that equity um, for the long term. Good okay. question. Thank you. Um, one of the uh, questions that we're often asked um, here at the center are, how are these practices related to employee engagement? That's a really good question. A lot of the research that we do on individual outcomes um, typically measure um, engagement variables. So if I go back to that one slide that highlighted the benefits of equity programs, um, these outcomes are very similar to engagement outcomes. Um, commitment is a big measure of engagement. Um, discretionary effort 
is also a very big measure of engagement. Um, I think um, involvement um, and job um, in the organization is another measure that we've seen. So collectively, um, what we have found is that the individual or employee outcomes of equity compensation are highly related to engagement. And that's why I think uh, it makes strategic sense because there's a wide body of research that shows employee engagement is very much tied to strategic and financial outcomes. And clearly equity compensation is a driver of um, employee engagement. Good question. Thank you. Um, there, there was a follow-up question that Nicole had asked. She says, how do you balance the idea of only 15% equity in one place with a democratic ownership model where entrepreneurial thinking is encouraged and the business often needs to retain more equity to thrive, often, often pushing it over 15% for any one employee owner? That's the challenge. Um, <laughs> in many organizations that are small and sharing equity, um, um, among their employees, but it still, from an economic perspective, makes sense for those individuals to look at their overall um, financial wealth um, as a diversified portfolio. Um, you know, I mean, clearly, um, there are exceptions, um, but those exceptions should be looked at very closely. Um, it's very risky for an individual to have a significant portion of their wealth tied to one company. Because um, think about it, if that company were to have financial troubles or even worse, go out of business, not only will their um, wealth go down significantly, but they'll also be unemployed. Um, it's a challenge um, that needs to be you know, well considered um, when you are accumulating a, a significant amount of um, financial wealth in one stock. Thank you. Um, our final question is, what role does leadership play um, with these practices? You know, leadership is a huge driver of um, a culture. So a lot of the practices that we've been talking about today, you know, collectively create a culture. You know, we're calling it an ownership culture. And like any culture, of an organization, leaders play a tremendous role. Um, they set the tone, um, they mirror the behaviors of um, um, other managers of the organization. They're the ones that oftentimes have to approve or set these policies. In a lot of the research that um, we do on leadership and culture, uh, we talk about transformational leaders are the kinds of leaders that best fit this culture that we've been talking about today. And I often get the question, well, you know, what's the difference between a transformational leader and perhaps a situational leader? And the response is a situational leader gets people to believe in them because of their status, because of their power, because of their position. A transformational leader gets people to believe in themselves. So that's very much aligned with creating an ownership culture. You know, these leaders have high emotional intelligence. They're the ones that openly get people involved in decision-making. They create a very stimulating type environment. Um, and they have very high expectations um, and typically are very successful in managing their business and managing their employees. Good question. Thank you. All right, that was our last question. Um, if anyone has any other follow-up questions, our contact inf information is going to be on the final slide. So please reach out and, and we're gonna get back to you. Our, our next webinar is going to be in September on freedom-based management models. And the date is to be determined, but we're going to reach out with more information in the coming weeks. And this concludes today's webinar. As I mentioned earlier, a link to the recording of this presentation will be emailed to you shortly. And for more information on the New Jersey New York Center for Employee Ownership, please visit our website, ownership.rutgers.edu. Thank you, Bill, for presenting, and thank you all for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your thank afternoon. Thank you. Thanks.